Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online every Saturday at 1215. And we are getting ready to discuss how God gets deep down in us and does his handiwork. And we're reading right now from Ephesians chapter 3, starting at verse 8. All right. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. God, please anoint, anoint, anoint this message in Jesus' name. Verse 9, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Right there. If you ever have anybody ask you, how do you know Jesus is God? How do you know he was in the beginning with God? Read that verse right there. Besides John 1.1, 1, 1, read this. Verse 9, which from the beginning of the world, had been hidden God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Just had to emphasize that. Okay, verse 10. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and accents with confidence by faith of him. Wherefore, I desire, listen to this, y'all. I desire that ye faint not at my tribulation for you, which is your glory. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven, in heaven and in earth is named. That, and this is it right here. He would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye may be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that ye could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. You know, one of the things that we forget <clears throat> is who God really is. I mean, I say it all the time because some of us, we walk with him, but some of us have yet to encounter him. That close encounter that removes all doubt. It won't remove all doubt about problems and problems being solved, but it will remove all doubt that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when you diligently seek God with all your heart, with all your might, with a lot of your extra time, your downtime, you're thinking of God, you're listening to songs of God, you're singing praises and worship to God, you're taking the time to soak in his word, you're listening to his word, you're reading his word, you're quoting his word and trying to memorize as much as you can. What ends up happening is your soul is being filled, it's being inflated with the power, with the workings of the Holy Spirit. And you constantly, on a daily basis, ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. If you, look, if you, if you picture a car, no car can run on an empty tank. No, no engine will function long as long as it has no oil in it. And we need the power of the Holy Spirit, we need the love of God, and we need the oil that brings the anointing because it's only the anointing that will break every yoke. That means your yokes as well. Every one of us has, we come into the kingdom, we come into the, the, the fold of Jesus with yokes all over us. 
and it takes the power of God to break those yokes. We come as damaged goods. We come with hang-ups, with idiosyncrasies. We come with insecurities, with fears, with worries, with frustrations, with, with attitudes, ungodly attitudes. Uh, we come to God in so many conditions that we don't realize that some of the conditions we come in is what causes some of the problems we have to run to God for rescue for. So when God wants to strengthen you with his might on the inner man, in verse 16, what he wants to do is have you ride on his fuel, function with his anointing, his oil, his fresh oil. He wants you to to work out your soul salvation under the power of his Holy Spirit. He never wants us to lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways, we are to acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. He won't leave us groping in the dark. He won't leave you with a whole bunch of questions and unanswered quandaries and situations that, that, that there's no answer to. He makes the way out of no way. He's the one that goes ahead of you, makes the crooked places straight and the rough places plain. He's the one that will be the lifter up of your soul. He's the one that will lift your head and help you rise above your enemies. There's a, a term that pilots use <clears throat> when they're talking to the, uh, the dispatch and there's a storm brewing. The storm is coming, the clouds are collecting, the lightning is flashing, thunder is, 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 is rattling everything around it, and the winds of adversity are blowing harder and harder. But here's the thing. What does the pilot, when he, when he asks for direction, he talks to the dispatch, and he tells them about the storm, and the dispatch looks on the radar, what do they see? They see the storm, they see the the circulation of it and what it's doing, where it's going and what direction it's blowing. And they will instruct the, the pilot, climb and maintain. Now, one thing about a plane, the easiest way for a plane to climb or even a bird to soar like an eagle, the winds of adversity have to come against it for it to have that it's not leverage that, uh, I can't think of the word. It's a scientific word I can't think of. That's all right. I'm old. Y'all excuse me. But there's a force. I don't know if it's ventriloquial force. Anyway, it's a force that when you go against it and you have to climb, you need that resistance to be able to climb high, to be able to soar. And what it does, it takes you even higher because of the power of the winds. And as long as you let the power of the winds of adversity work in your favor, as the word says, all things work together for the good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. What happens is the things that were coming against you re become, they reposition themselves because of the power of God in you. And as you're climbing, they're lowering and they become, they're beneath you. So they become your footstool. And what do you do with a footstool? You put your foot on it. And then you use your muscles and raise yourself up higher. That's what you do with your enemies. Put your foot on the problem. Put your foot on the adversity. Put your foot on the challenge. Put your foot on the enemy, whether they be tangible or intangible. And you raise yourself over it by the power God gives you by his Holy Spirit. That's what you do. You don't let it get you down. You don't sit down on the ground, part your legs, wail and wallow in self-pity. No, that's what Peter did in the ocean that made him sink. He looked around and he considered the problem rather than the problem solver. So you keep your mind stayed on him and he will keep you in perfect peace. Perfect peace. One day, just to give you little life situations, just little life examples. One day, 
I had um, I had left a place that was a long distance away. And when I got in my car, I thought I remembered seeing my wallet. My wallet had everything in it. Everything, y'all. You know how that is. And I get I, I got home and I'm putting all the stuff in the house and I realize I have everything but my wallet. Oh no. Oh no. Now, 10 years ago, I would have been in tears, y'all. Oh, God, help me. 10 years ago, I would have been hitting the panic button, praying. But praying in faith and in fear. <laughs> well, this time, I stopped. And I acknowledged him in that particular place. And I said, Lord, if my wallet is safe and sound, whether I find it tonight or not, let me know by the peace you put inside of me. Let me know by putting me in that perfect peace. I already had peace, but I wanted, I wanted him to uh, put a check in my spirit if I needed to pursue the search or relax me. You hear me? All right. So what happened was, after I asked the Lord if my wallet was all right, that peace just, I don't know how to say it, it intensified. I was in perfect peace and I knew it was all right. Within a few hours, I located my wallet on a, on a fluke. But the bottom line is, it was safe. It was in my house. Everything was fine. I had just placed it where it blended in with something black because the wallet was black. So just to share with you, there are times when something could be threatening. But the first thing you ought to do before you address the problem is have God address you. That's how he strengthens you on the inner man. When you're in a quandary, when you're in a challenging situation, if you can learn to lean on God with all your might. I did a video about a year and a half ago with my two canes, and I was showing how I walk and how I put my weight on the canes and how the canes give me leverage. And when I lean on the canes, I can walk much further without getting tired than I can without the canes. If I walk without the canes, I'm getting exhausted very quickly. But when I walk with my canes, I can walk without the canes, that's not a problem. But I notice when I walk with the canes, because I don't have any arches in my feet, my whole body has to get into the walk. So I'm a lot more tired without them. When I walk with the canes, and God's the one that told me to buy the canes. When I walk with the canes, I notice I could walk two, three, four blocks before I'm like, oh, I got to sit down somewhere. As long as I have both canes, I can walk. I can walk and I can continue to walk and, and be all right. But when I walk without the canes, it could be just 20 or, or 50 feet and I, I have to stop and lean on something. And it's because my whole body has to get into the balancing act because I have no muscles on the bottom of my feet. I was born that way. So God started dealing with me about four or five years ago. I want you to get two canes. Now, he didn't say one. He said two. What a difference when you walk with two canes. You don't have to be crippled. You don't have to have a, an ailment. But when God tells you to do that little extra something that you think is unnecessary, and you do it, you see why. You see how much easier life is. Well, the same way I lean on those canes, I lean on God. I, I mean, there are times when, when Mariel and I would talk on the phone and she would say she was asking God this or asking God that. She's, she's like my little baby sister that I've adopted. When you see a person who knows how to lean on God, she will seek godly counsel. She will seek prayer. She will dig, scratch, disprobe, prod, knock, seek, answer. I mean, knock, seek, ask. She will do whatever it takes to get her answers. And as a result, she gets results. 
She gets results from God because she's scratching and digging for God rather than scratching and digging for stuff out there she doesn't need to put her hands on. So the more you lean on God, the easier your life will be. The harder you put your weight on God, the easier the problems will even be for you to deal with. You will find yourself not full of turmoil. You will find yourself not restless. You'll find yourself not scratching and, and, and scratching your head and pulling your hair out by the roots. You will notice that you're not flying off at the handle. You know, one of the things that I noticed about myself, and some of you may have the same issue, if you're worried about something, if something's pressing on your mind and you have not taken that to God, casting all your care on him because he cares for you, mm -hmm. When you don't cast all your cares on God and you're trying to work it out in your own little pea brain, you find that you're more irritable, you're touchy, you're edgy, <laughs> you're easily annoyed. Huh? Yeah. Your temperament is not pretty at all. Yeah. And that's one of the symptoms of knowing you have not released it all to God. You're restless so much that even in the middle of the night, you're waking up with that thing on your mind. That should not be when you're leaning on God. When you have taken that thing and said, I'm giving this to you. I'm going to share a story. Some of my church members know it. They've heard it before. Forgive me, y'all. But I want you guys to hear this story because sometimes we don't realize. I was sharing it with Gina the other night. There are times when you go through a problem you go through a challenge, an obstacle, you're withdrawing yourself from a problem. You're separating yourself from something your heart is yearning for, but you know it's not of God. You know it's not healthy. You know it leads to dysfunction. You know it, 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 just, it just escalates and snowballs into a runaway train and blows up in your face if you don't let it go. So you have to constantly ask God for help letting it go. But one of the ways you let things go is by saying like this, Lord, I give this problem to you. Lord, I give, like with me, it was my ex-husband, my first husband with adultery, left and right. I give my, my husband and his adultery to you. I give my financial crisis to you. I give my health issues to you. Here is my body. I, I bring it to you a living sacrifice. Hopefully it's holy and acceptable unto you, which is the least I could do, my reasonable service. So you give things to God. You give him your fears. Lord, I'm afraid. I don't want to be afraid because you are love and fear is not of love. And Perfect love cast out fear. So, Lord, drive this fear out of me. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. But I ask you to drive it out of me and fill me with the strength, with the peace that passes all understanding. You have to battle at every turn. You have to address every thought, every feeling, every act, every word that wants to fly out of your mouth. Every feeling of discouragement. Some of you, especially women, are given to emotion certain times of the cycles of the month. Some of you men are given to emotional outbursts because you've been taught to, to keep it all in. You, you, you're not used to expressing and becoming buck naked to God saying, Lord, I'm a mess. I need your help. I'm afraid. Some of you men have a hard time dealing with that. So there are times when you have to make yourself so transparent. The more transparent you are with God, the more God will handle you. See, the thing about going through life is not that God changes everything. It's not that God fixes everything. God will help you walk through the fire. You won't get burned. God will help you walk through the flood. You won't get drowned. God will help you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You will not die. See, what God does is he'll take the obstacles of life, the challenges of life, the broken relationships, 
the broken promises, the fragmentation that goes on as a result of life's vicissitudes, and he will put you back together again. The potter wants to put you back together again. That's what he wants to do. But that is part of what makes life so much easier, is the harder you lean, think of him as those two canes, the harder you lean, the easier it is, the less tired you get, the less exhausted you get, the less wiped out you get, the, the you don't feel like giving up, throwing in the towel. You don't get discouraged. And if a feeling of discouragement comes on you, right at the moment you feel it. Don't let it get in there. Soak in like you do with a sponge when you put it in dishwater and let it soak up all the moisture. You don't soak in all that negative crap. You say, I rebuke depression in the name of Jesus. I rebuke anger in the name of Jesus. I rebuke and forsake wrath in the name of Jesus. Psalms 37 says forsake wrath. Years ago when I was angry, about, I was annoyed. I wasn't really angry. I was annoyed. I was really annoyed. Really annoyed. Okay. And God considered it wrath. So he led me to Psalms 37 before I went downstairs to handle what I needed to handle. And the scripture in Psalms 37, there's a verse that says, forsake wrath. Do you know as soon as I read the words, the anger left, the irritation left, the annoyance left, it's gone. And I was back at perfect peace. And I said, God, thank you. I didn't even realize I was letting that spirit in. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes we come in agreement with our emotions and what we're doing inadvertently is coming in agreement with a demonic power because demons are always trying to find a crack in your door. They're always trying to find a, a crack in your window. They're always trying to find a weak spot. And if they can find a weak spot, they will take advantage of it because that's what they do. They are opportunists. And de demons of discouragement, demons of anger, demons of resentment, demons of bitterness, demons of fear, intimidation, demons of confusion, demons of lies. They will have you thinking God isn't thinking about you. God doesn't want to be bothered with you. You are too much of a mess. He doesn't have time to hold your hand at every turn. Oh, yes, he does. That's the kind of God we have. Demons of scorn that will have you hating yourself, hating the way you are. See, when you start reading the word and you see it, how Jesus dealt with demons, what he said to demons, you will learn spiritual warfare. You will learn how to get rid of those feelings before they soak into you. Don't come into agreement with them. Don't tolerate them. You have to sometimes quote the word that says, I am blessed. I am, God is on my side. He is for me. If God is for me, who can be against me? So what you do after that is you command the devil and his emotions and his imps and, and all his and negative thoughts. Go, get out of me, get out of this house, never return. I rebuke you, I renounce you in the name of Jesus. Take your lies and go elsewhere. Do not trample on my turf because this is holy ground. My house, my property, my apartment, my car, my body. This is holy ground and you are trespassing. Go in the name of Jesus. See, you can allow yourself to feel those negative feelings all you want. Or you can climb and maintain, climb over it and maintain God's peace in your spirit. Amen. All right. Not going to be long. I feel right now that I'm done. But just know all of that takes prayer, reading God's word, quoting God's word, singing worship and praises. Those things remind you of who God really is. Go back and, and rehearse all the ways that God has blessed your life. 
Those things right there will help you as you rehearse what God has done in your life. They will help reinforce your faith so that when the adversity comes, you can always climb and maintain his peace. Because you don't ever want the enemy to rape you psychologically, rape you spiritually, or rape you in your circumstances. God bless you. Be encouraged. Amen. Amen. <laughs>